Greetings everyone, and welcome to ASMR Gaming News. Please hit that like button, sit back, relax, and let's begin. So, there was a special Pokemon Nintendo style direct this past week. And it was centered around the upcoming big Pokemon game, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, which is the, you know, big next-gen Pokemon game that everyone has been waiting for. And this live stream event that they had had a nice long trailer with some gameplay. They announced some new features which would be in this upcoming Pokemon game. They gave us a release date. So, uh, first, the game is coming out in November this year, so just a few months, uh, well, not necessarily a few months, but it's coming out this year, uh, so that's nice. Uh, there's going to be a special double pack version, which comes with both, uh, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. So if you want to buy both games at once, you can actually do that with this special double version. Uh, there's also like a Steelbook edition and special stuff included with that, depending where you pre-order it from. And they also reveal the legendaries. Uh, and honestly, the new legendaries, you know, for <laughs> Pokemon Sword and Shield, don't look that great in my opinion. Now, I know some people really like how they look, but I've read uh, some posts in the Pokemon community from some people saying that they are a little bit underwhelmed at the reveal. They think the legendaries don't look that great either. Um, early on, I was thinking of getting Pokemon Shield just because I liked how the logo looked like. But after the reveal of the legendary, I think I'm going to be going with the Pokemon Sword version just because it looks slightly better than the Shield version. Uh, well, that's what I think, but still, it, it, I don't know, I think they could have done something a little bit better with how they look. But regardless, the gameplay and trailer they gave us in this uh, Pokemon Direct was amazing. There is a huge open world to explore. Uh, there's going to be like this special Dy Dynamax or Dynamax battles, um, which you're going to be able to, like, enter and use, like, special Pokemon moves, uh, called Max Moves. So they're, you know, adding some new features to this game to make it special. Uh, there's going to be multiplayer raids where you, along with other people online, are able to, like, team up and take on a very large, big, like, Pokemon. Uh, either to capture them for a special event or defeat them, so that's nice. And the graphics, the graphics look really nice, like for a Pokemon game, most people are familiar with, you know, playing it on your Nintendo DS or 3DS, and having the graphics be, you know, not that great, but this one is, like, full on 3D, the world is 3D, you can rotate the camera, uh, they did a good, good job of showing that in the, like, direct, like in this gameplay trailer, and I really like the art style. It's kind of like a nice cartoony style. Uh, they showed off a bunch of like Pokemon in the trailer as well. Uh, so definitely check out the new trailer if you haven't seen it yet. But really, really awesome. I'm excited for this upcoming Pokemon game. I'm probably going to be playing it on the channel once it releases in November. So hopefully you all check that out. But yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I, I just can't get over the graphics. Like... It's all very, very nice. It finally looks like a modern, like, generation Pokemon game that everyone has been asking for, so... Uh, I can't wait to play this. The battles look like a lot of fun. Not sure what I think about the Dyna, Dynamax battle feature. Uh, and the multiplayer raid, though, that sounds like a lot of fun, but... Really excited about this, and a lot of fans are as well, so... It's been a great week for Pokemon fans. And next, we have some news from uh, Google. So, the Google Stadia was announced a while ago. I did a video on it for the channel when it was first announced. But uh, Google had a special livestream event scheduled for this week. 
and during this like live stream they gave out some details like the specs on the Google Stadia and okay so it's launching in November there's going to be like a beta that you can possibly get into but from most people it's coming out in November uh, it's launching first in North America and in certain European countries and like certain other regions it's not going to be launching there like in South America I, I think they mentioned that the release would be happening a little bit later but yeah in November it's launching in North America and in Europe in select regions and okay so there's going to be like two versions of the Google Stadia so there is a free version that's completely free and as long as you have a device that can run Google like either your web browser your computer like uh, or your phone if you have an Android device if you have a tablet you know that runs Android connected to the Google Play Store or Google Apps uh, if you have a TV that's compatible with like Google Chromecast and other features like that uh, you are going to be able to just plug in your PlayStation 3 or Xbox or any other controller into your PC and access uh, Google Stadia now the free version is going to be 1080p HD and play 60 FPS games and there's going to be a list of games that you can apparently like buy and stream them so or there's going to be like demos and games that you can try out before you buy them but the free version is going to allow you access to these games uh, as long as you you know buy the game but you're going to have access then there's going to be a paid version uh, that's going to be $9.99 a month, so $9.99, so basically $10 a month. And you're, you're, you're going to get like a subscription service, which is going to give you like 4K resolution games, so you're going to be able to play games in 4K at 60 fps as long as your internet connection is good uh this whole thing depends on how good your internet connection is but there's going to be a bunch of games for it uh, final fantasy 15 assassin's creed rainbow six uh ghost recon a bunch of other games like any popular game that came out maybe in the last year or two and some upcoming titles they're going to be available for this um and then there's like an expensive uh, version that costs like 109 or 120 dollars which comes with a google stadia like an official google branded controller so if you don't have an xbox or a playstation 4 controller at your house uh, you can buy the google stadia controller it's a nice controller that's included in this uh, deal and with the controller comes a like google chromecast which you can like connect uh, with your TV or any other you know monitor or screen device and with that you're going to be able to use your Google Stadia controller link it to the Chromecast and have access to at least three months of free $9.99 uh, you know subscription so the $10 subscription is going to be included for free uh, for three months if you buy this bundle the uh, like founders or pre-order edition but I wouldn't recommend getting that version because I'm sure most of you already have controllers at your house so just wait for November and pick up the free version you know it's gonna be available for free and if there's a game you want to just plug in your PlayStation 4 or Xbox controller into your computer buy the game that you want from the Google Stadia store and see if it streams because uh, you need to have fast internet there's a test that you can do on the Google Stadia website and hey I'm excited like I think this is going to be pretty cool as long as you have a good internet connection and Google is saying that they have the infrastructure to make sure this runs well so I'm gonna take their word for it but hopefully you know it actually works like they say it does because if it's laggy if there's a lot of latency issues that have nothing to do with people that have good or bad internet connections uh well then it's it's going to be a failure i think because you need to have the games run consistently at the frame rate that it says so i don't know i'm excited for it i think it's going to be awesome but 
a wait and see in November just how good the Stadia is going to run, but hopefully it's awesome. Uh, next, Blizzard announces, or this is like a rumor, so a source said that Blizzard announced, like internally, that the StarCraft first person shooter that they were working on. So yeah, there was a StarCraft first person shooter that they were trying to develop at the company. That has been canceled, but instead all the resources have gone to make Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. So I'm really excited about this because, hey, Overwatch, they're making a sequel to Overwatch, Overwatch 2. Uh, I mean, Overwatch is one of my favorite games ever. I really like Overwatch, so the fact that they're making a sequel sounds amazing. Um, honestly, it's been amazing how they've continued to update the base, like, Overwatch game, that it's surprising to hear that they're already making a sequel, but apparently it's in development. And there is a new Diablo game in development, Diablo 4, which was technically already known, um... This was, this was confirmed a while ago by Blizzard and some people internally, but still, this is interesting news, so I look forward to hearing more information about this officially from uh, Blizzard, hopefully in the next uh, few months. Uh, next, some really classic RPGs are getting ported to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. So these are considered to be classic RPGs, like a lot of people will list these as some of the best like PC RPGs of all time, and they're getting console ports uh, this fall, so this is really big news. Uh, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, apparently Icewind, uh, Dale, uh, Planescape Torment, and Neverwinter Nights are launching on console this fall, so you're going to be able to play these games on your Nintendo Switch, on your PS4, on your Xbox One. Uh, the graphics have been slightly improved. Uh, there's only so much they can do since these games did come out a very long time ago. Like over 20 years, I believe, most of these games came out. So uh, it's been a while, but games like uh, Planescape Torment are still listed on like top 50 games of all time lists and stuff like that whenever IGN or other websites do like top top 10, top 50, top 100 game lists, usually Planescape Torment is on that list, so this is going to be a way for people that have never played some of these classic games to experience them for the first time with slightly improved uh, graphics and new features, so this is great news for classic and new RPG fans, so really, really unique news. Uh, I never thought I'd see the day where <laughs> some of these games would get ported to console. And additionally, Baldur's Gate 3 was announced for Google Stadia and PC. So Baldur's Gate, a uh, long-running series, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, the first and second game are getting ported to console. And now they're making an entirely new game in the series. It's being developed right now. Uh, there's no release date or anything like that. It's only been announced. There is a trailer that came out. Uh, this was announced during the Google Stadia event, by the way. So some people got worried, thinking it would be an exclusive to Google Stadia, but apparently it's going to be launching on, like, the Epic Games Store and on Steam and some other websites as well. So you're going to be able to play it on PC as of right now, uh, according to this announcement. So no, you know, reveal or anything about a PS4 or Xbox release. Uh, which I don't think is likely. This is a game that's a game series that, that that is known to be like PC exclusive for the most part. But a lot of fans are excited about this. People that have not played a Baldur's Gate game in years. I've seen them tweeting on like Twitter and stuff mentioning how they're so excited for this game. So lots of people are coming out uh, showing their support for the reveal of this. So it's it's kind of a big deal in the PC gaming, like, RPG community, at least. Um, next, E3 is coming up, so that's basically, like, Christmas for video games. E3 is when all the big game companies announce their upcoming games for all 
systems and GameStop accidentally like leaked a list that uh, 20 un unannounced Switch games are going to be shown or revealed at E3. So let me say that again, 20 unannounced games, so these have never been announced before, are apparently going to be shown at E3 according to this leaked uh, GameStop-like database list. Now the list does not have any names for these games, it's just like random numbers and letters like A, C, T, L9, R3, stuff like that. <laughs> like, who knows what that could mean, but there are 20 games uh, with, you know, no release date to be announced, but we know there's 20 games, so these could be anything from like a new Zelda game, a new Super Mario game, to, I guess, like an indie game or something like that, but still, this is really, really exciting. So, Nintendo fans are extremely hyped for E3 right now, as am I, because this means that there are 20 games that Nintendo could possibly show off for the first time at their uh, Nintendo Direct stream for E3, so I'm excited and can't wait to see what they show. Next, um, Watch Dogs Legion leaked on an Amazon listing in the UK, so before E3 there are always leaks that happen and Apparently, Ubisoft is working on a new Watch Dogs game because after this leak came out, uh, someone was browsing the Amazon UK website, noticed that Watch Dogs Legion was listed on there with no artwork or anything, and they were like, wait, there's a new Watch Dogs game coming out. And then after this leak happened and everyone was talking about it, Ubisoft basically came out and said, yeah, Watch Dogs Legion is real and expect a full reveal at E3, so we hope to see you there, and like, you know, they're kind of teasing the announcement, but yeah, it's pretty much confirmed, uh, Ubisoft is working on a new Watch Dogs game, uh, I know a lot of people really like the first game, the second game had some issues, but there seems to be a fan base for the Watch Dogs game, so I'm sure Legion is going to be met with a lot of, you know, excitement from the fans, so that's going to be revealed at E3 in just a few days uh, at the Ubisoft or Xbox press conference, probably. Next, we got some Minecraft news. So this is actually kind of disappointing news. Uh, Minecraft, the story mode for Minecraft, all the episodes, uh, seasons for the Minecraft story mode are going to be delisted and removed from all online stores starting June 25th this year, so 2019. So you only have a few more weeks of actually buying the Minecraft story mode. So if you have an Xbox, a PlayStation 4, PC, and you really want to play the Minecraft story mode, I highly recommend buying it right now and making sure you download all the updates and all the DLC and stuff you want because once they remove it from the store, you're not going to be able to download it ever again, even if you bought it. And according to these like uh, news uh, links and stuff here that I'm reading, they are also going to remove the ability to update it. So let's say if you buy it right now and you do not update it, well, on June 25th, they're going to remove the servers that like host the update or patches for the game, and you will not be able to update it or patch it to the latest version. So this is actually kind of serious. So a lot of like Minecraft fans out there that uh, you know, didn't didn't ever get the chance to play the story mode or really like the story mode are all like downloading it again and making sure to update it so it's completely updated and patched before it gets completely shut down on June 25th. So if you're a Minecraft fan, definitely go do that. Or if you're someone that has never played any of these Minecraft uh, story mode games, well, you should probably download it as well if you're interested in trying these out before they get completely delisted and removed from all online stores. Uh, next, we have some, uh, you know, pretty good news for all you Apple fans out there. So, Apple uh, hosted like a special event this past week where they announced iOS 13, their new Macs, um, what is it, Mac Pros and iPods and stuff like that. 
Well, during this uh, keynote uh, speech presentation that they had, they basically revealed that all of their Apple devices, you know, ones that will support iOS 13, that's coming out later this year in November, I believe, uh, they're all going to add full PlayStation 4 controller support. So what this means is if you want to play any video game on your iPod, iPad, iPhone, or any like MacBook or Mac Pro, you know, computer, you're going to be able to connect your PlayStation 4 controller and basically use it to play games or even like access menus and go through menu screens and settings using the PlayStation 4 controller. So that's going to be included in the new update. So that's awesome. Um, a lot of people are excited, especially in the Fortnite community, because this means that if you're playing Fortnite on your iPad or iPhone or any other Apple device that, you know, can run Fortnite, uh, when this, like, iOS 13 releases, these, this new OS releases, you're basically going to be able to connect your PlayStation 4 controller and use it remotely to play Fortnite on your Apple device, which means you're probably going to have a insane, like, insane advantage going up against people using the touchscreen or mobile controls. So this is pretty awesome, if you ask me, especially for other video games, you know, if you want to play any of the... I don't know, GTA games on your iPad or something like that, you can now use the PS4 controller, so it at least will, you know, function a little bit better using proper controls this time, so that's awesome, really good news, especially for people that game on their uh, Apple devices. Next, uh, Ubisoft came out to talk about the PlayStation 5, and they're very, very popular shooter game, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, uh, which is a game that a lot of people have been asking me on the channel to play. Uh, I'm interested in playing it, it's just that it looks really intense, and the skill gap, like, when I'm watching videos, seems crazy, like, you have to be really, really good at that game to even understand what's going on, but it looks awesome. But uh, Ubisoft this week said that they are looking to support Rainbow Six Siege long term. And when the PlayStation 5 releases, they will continue to update the game and hopefully like increase the community and fan base so it continues on into the next generation of systems. So they were a little bit vague with this statement because we don't know if they mean the PlayStation 4 version will continue to be, like, updated on the PlayStation 5, you know, if you have the PS4 Rainbow Six Siege disc in your PS5, if it's going to be, you know, constantly updated and kept up to date, and the community will just keep playing the PS4 game on their PS5, or if they're going to be, like, releasing a special, I don't know, game of the year edition for PlayStation 5, which will be the exact same version, same servers and everything, just made specifically for the PS5, and allow some kind of cross-play between the PS4 and PS5 versions. Uh, not sure what they mean by this, but they do intend to support the game into the next generation, which is awesome. Most game companies, when the new generation of consoles come out, they're like, Okay, well, that's it for this game. We're going to move on to, like, Halo 5 now. No more Halo 2 or something like that, you know? So this is, you know, uh, pretty interesting on Ubisoft's part for doing this. Uh, I'm curious to see if Fortnite and Epic Games kind of does the same exact thing moving forward into the next generation. But uh, I really like seeing this. And last piece of news is from Sony. Uh, there was a patent that Sony filed, which uh, people discovered this past week, which talks about how PlayStation 4 games on the PlayStation 5 are going to receive a significant, like, performance boost. Uh, at least, w this is what the patent that people have found out suggests. So, uh, similar to, like, the PlayStation 4 Pro playing PlayStation 4 games slightly better, it seems that on the PlayStation 5, there's going to be, like, some performance-enhancing, like, modes that you can turn on 
when you play a PlayStation 4 game might run faster, run better, have higher frame rates, uh, better graphics, like higher resolutions, stuff like that, maybe better textures, who knows, if you play that game on your PS5. So, nothing's been confirmed yet. This is just a patent, apparently, that people have found. But if this is true, this means that a lot of amazing PlayStation 4 games might look even better if you play them on PlayStation 5, which makes me really, really happy because I don't want to give up my PS4 game collection. So if I can play those games on PS5 with better graphics or, you know, higher frame rates, stuff like that, I'm going to be really, really happy about that. So really excited. Hopefully Sony announces something later this year when they reveal the PlayStation 5, but all in all, this has been a great week for video game news, and I can't wait for E3, which is happening in just a few days, and we're going to get so many crazy, insane game reveals. I, I'm already calling it. There's going to be like over 200 new games announced, probably. So, yeah, next next Friday for the news video, there's going to be a lot of games we're going to talk about. I'll probably just talk about, you know, the big, important reveals, but can't wait for E3. So, that's it for this week. Thanks for listening or watching this video. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash ASMRgaming. And with as little as $1 a month, you can help support the channel. So videos like this can be made. So definitely do that if you can. And uh, yeah, that's it for this week. So thanks again for watching. And I will see you all next time. So long and farewell.